Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today we are starting this month's new release thriller vlog. I talked about it in my TBR. I'll just do a quick rundown before we get into it of what I'm going to be reading in this video. We have The Night She Went Missing by Kristen Bird. Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild, This Might Hurt by Stephanie Roble, Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough, and I have a bonus Jonas book that I'm putting in this video, which is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager, probably my most highly anticipated thriller of 2022. I just got sent a last minute e-arc of it so I have it on my Kindle and I'm going to be reading that at some point in this vlog but it's not the first book that I've started. I was so craving a good cult book especially after the two previous that I read last month and kind of ranted about in my wrap-up. did not work out. <laughs> So I ended up starting This Might Hurt by Stephanie Roble this morning while I was getting ready. And I got to the 20% mark. This book is following two sisters and we flash back and forth. Every other chapter goes from present day to when the sisters were growing up together. And when the sisters were growing up, they were in this really abusive home with their father who made them like score points. So like, say you made your bed or you helped set the table, you would get a point for that. Um, if you cry, it's like minus four points and you have to have a positive 15 points by the end of the day to earn your sleep. Yeah, so it's a very abusive home and in present day, one of the sisters is a highly successful businesswoman and the other one is trapped in a cult. So the businesswoman sister is going to try to save her other sister and get her out of this cult. I'm also kind of trying to figure out which sister is which in the flashback chapters. I'm not sure. I feel like they're going to be pulling an Uno reverse card at some point and the sister who we think is the one in the cult in the flashback chapters is going to be the other one. So I'm trying to stay on my toes with that, but I am enjoying it so far. The cult dynamics are really creepy, really interesting, and it's really intriguing to think about the psychology of two people who have grown up in an abusive home, like one of them went drastically to this like growth mindset into success and the other one finds herself in another abusive situation. So that is just interesting to think about as well. Um, but right now I cannot keep reading my book. I'm about to go meet my friend to get some tacos and coffee because she just graduated from the same master's program that I graduated in December. So we're just gonna catch up network, you know, do our little therapist thing, which is why I'm kind of wearing like my hot girl outfit. You know, we got the athletic dress. We got the white button down over the top, the gold jewelry, the claw clip, and the fitness band, of course. It's all happening. I'm so excited to go hang out with her. And then I will, of course, take you with me through the rest of my day. And hopefully I'll get to pick this book up again at some point. I got about to the 50% mark of This Might Hurt. Uh, since I've gotten home from lunch, I also read a little bit while I was there hanging out with her. We had a great time catching up. But now we are in part two and the perspective has shifted and we kind of get to see how the sister who's in the cult got there, which honestly, you'd think would be the interesting part, but it's not. <laughs> and I'm thinking maybe I just don't find cult books interesting. I think I really want to, but something in me, I, I don't think I like them <laughs> because I enjoy cult books until we're actually in the cult. And then I'm like, I don't like this. However, I do like that this cult 
is like, it's not the traditional, you know, like stereotypical, like sex cult with this one man that has a million wives. It doesn't have to do with like this crazy radical religion. Like it's headed by a woman, which I think is very interesting how like a woman can be so manipulative. It kind of reminds me of the main woman in Nine Perfect Strangers. Actually, this book reminds me a lot of Nine Perfect Strangers. If you like that one, you will definitely like this one. Uh, but I like that the cult is, is more like approachable than a very like extreme stereotypical portrait of a cult. I think it's a, a more understandable cult. Like, oh, I totally get how this girl got roped into it and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, I'm liking that part of it, but it's a little bit boring compared to part one so far. So that's the tea. I'm about to have a meeting with my supervisor and then afterwards, I'm gonna read a little bit more, film a video, and then start dinner. How is the day almost already over? I don't know. Y'all, I just got out of my meeting and I got possibly the most exciting email I've ever gotten in my life. <laughs> I love Judith Sonnet. If y'all don't know, she is the phenomenal author of For the Sake of the Clown Hunt. All these books I've been raving about recently. She writes extreme horror. So if you're a little pussy bitch, you can't handle it. <laughs> don't listen to this. Um, but I am not. And I love it. So she just sent me For the Sake of Two. <laughs> okay. Y'all, I love when my favorite things get a sequel. And For the Sake of has a sequel. I'm so excited to get into it. So this vlog might have to go on pause for a couple days because I might just like binge it all. Honestly, not even a couple days. It's gonna take me like an hour or two to read it because I'm gonna be so excited. I'm gonna wanna binge it in one sitting. If you would like a copy of For the Sake of Two, definitely check that out. Um, obviously I have to read the first one first, but the second one actually comes out on my birthday, June 1st. It is literally the best birthday present that a new favorite book of mine is getting a sequel. So go and get that. It's on Amazon, super easy, you know. You know how to do it. Go to Amazon, buy it, so easy. Get on your Kindle. Anyway, very excited about that and I wanted to let you know, but now since I'm done with my meetings, I'm free as a bird, free as a bird. And I'm gonna make risotto for dinner because I'm feeling fancy. I probably am gonna keep um, listening to the audiobook of This Might Hurt, but I might take that detour to read for the sake of two. I'll keep you posted. We have risotto in the works. I'm just waiting for the garlic and onions to soften so I can put the rice in. The broth is simmering over there. And the white wine that I'm using in this risotto is actually from Bright Sellers. Uh, I know my patrons know, but if you don't know, <laughs> um, I got sponsored by Bright Sellers. This video itself isn't sponsored, but y'all, this wine kind of slaps. So I'm so excited to try the one Chardonnay that they sent me because that is usually my go-to. So I'm gonna put it in the risotto. I'll give you my review. And of course, if you're wanting to try Bright Sellers for yourself, I will put my link down below. Obviously it is an affiliate link since I'm working with them. But again, this video isn't sponsored. Just wanna mention it because I'm so excited to be working with them. And you know, after I put it in there, I'm gonna pour myself a glass. up vlog it is after dinner the risotto was delicious i'm on the last glass of wine <laughs> from that bottle no i'm not an alcoholic i did use a lot of wine in the risotto i have made it to the 85 percent mark of this might hurt the first like twist of all the twists happened and I predicted it. Obviously I did not tell y'all my prediction, so this is not a spoiler, but I do wanna let you know that I did predict the first twist. Like I definitely saw it coming and it is one of my least favorite twists in modern thrillers. I feel like they just keep doing the same thing 
over and over and over and it's not shocking anymore. I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not that invested. This is honestly feeling like a pretty average read, which is kind of disappointing because this morning I was really vibing with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up and let you guys know my final thoughts. Hey besties. Sorry for the shitty lighting. I was just laying in bed <laughs> as I finished. This might hurt and I did not want to get out of bed. So we are not getting out the ring light. We are not doing like a setup, okay? We are just gonna talk about this book. I honestly don't even wanna waste my breath on it because I feel the same way about this book that I do about every other cult book I've ever read, which is that it's pointless. I don't know if this is just me or a theme with cult thrillers, but the ending totally negates the entire journey for me. I did not like this book. I thought it was very average. I thought all the twists were something I've seen before. I'm so sick of thrillers not having actual twists and just using the cop out of like, oh, this person isn't who we thought they were. If that happens back to back to back, I'm sorry, it's lazy. It's lazy thriller writing. So this book kind of made me mad. I don't know, I'm gonna give it a two star. Like it was entertaining in the first half, so I can't give it a one. It wasn't egregious, but it's definitely not great. Kind of mad <laughs> that I have this book, like I own it now because it's not a fave. So that is that for This Might Hurt. Now I like really don't wanna read that author's first book, which was Darling Rose Gold. Let me know if I'm missing out and I should read that one, but that's how I'm feeling right now. I think tonight I'm gonna start The House Across the Lake because I'm just really excited for that one. I got an unexpected arc, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this one on my Kindle, but I do wanna spend some time with Cameron when he gets home, so we will probably end up watching The Circle. <laughs> I don't know if y'all watch The Circle. It's like our favorite show ever. We are hoes for reality TV, so we're probably gonna watch the new episodes that dropped of The Circle, and then hopefully I'll have some time tonight to start The House Across the Lake on my Kindle. I'll see you in the morning. Hi vlog, it is quite late in the day now but we are just catching up. I went to the gym and then I went ahead and laid out for a little bit because I had a lot of time before my sessions. I only have evening sessions today. Um, and I actually have a super late session that I don't usually have just to accommodate to a client. So I had a literal empty day. It's so weird when your work doesn't start until like when most people get off work, but it was kind of nice to have the pool be emptier than usual and have it kind of to myself and with a few other girlies. Um, but I was able to actually get over halfway through the house across the lake and I'm really loving it. I know that this has already been getting some mixed reviews, but as we know, this is a Riley Sager stan account. I love everything that Riley Sager does. I don't think he could write something that I wouldn't enjoy, and I really am liking this one so far. Basically, we are following this little community. It's like a little grouping of lake houses around this lake. Uh, so there are only five houses that have access to this lake. So it's very private, which is obviously a draw for celebrities that want a lake house. They don't want to like be seen in their lake house by all these random people. So mostly celebrities live around this lake. And there's one celebrity who is like staying in her house named Casey. And we are in her head, we're kind of going from her perspective, and she's living there, recovering from some traumatic stuff. She had some really bad press, and she's really not coping well with the death of her husband. So she goes to stay in this lake house. Her mother kind of like forces her to stay there and try to recoup her career and wait out the bad press. And while she's there, this super wealthy, famous couple of this famous supermodel and her tech billionaire husband 
live across the lake and they're visiting there in their house and it's like the super modern lake house so it's all clear glass and at night when they have their lights on she can just see right in like they're on display so she starts spying on them and watching them and she's a super unreliable narrator we don't know if we can necessarily trust everything that she's seeing and hearing and spying because she is an alcoholic she has some substance abuse problems and of course she is going through a lot with the trauma of losing her husband so we don't necessarily know what's really going on and what is being filtered through her issues so she basically suspects that the tech guy husband murdered the supermodel because she went missing halfway through their supposed lake trip. And she's trying to figure out, teamed up with a handyman, <laughs> what is going on here. And we just had like this huge development in the case. Not There's no case because nobody's listening to her, but like her own little investigation and the thing that was like revealed was so well done. I thought it was so creepy and it was at the halfway point and we already have this like break in the case kind of thing. I love unreliable narrators. I love kind of like the scrappy person on the side doing their own investigation without the cops. So I am really enjoying this one. It's also super interesting to read about famous people. I love reading about like fake famous people in fiction. Um, super fast paced. I am just really, really loving it. I have nothing but good things to say about this one. I do have Patreon sprints tonight, so I will probably be able to actually knock this one out and finish it today during sprints after my sessions. So I'll keep y'all posted. We are sprinting, sprinting with the patrons and the dogs are growling. They're literally going crazy. I don't know why Mochi is causing such a ruckus and being so sassy. Look at him go. He's just running around like a crazy boy. But I'm reading House Across the Lake. I am, as you can see, 57% of the way through. I know Miss J Hill, Jennifer Hillier, my bestie, my queen, literally my favorite author of all time. Her and Riley Sager are friends. I just know this reference, like Hillier's is the ice cream shop in this town. I just know this is a reference to Jennifer Hillier and that makes me so happy. And I cannot give this book less than three stars now because it references literally my favorite author. Like Riley Sager is literally asking me to give him five stars. Like I have to do it. <laughs> No, I am really, really liking the book though. Um, but I just thought that was so cool that he referenced his bestie. Like if I was an author, that's what I would do. I'd be like, oh my God, it's um, like Grayson's Boutique. Oh my God, it's like McKay's Corner Store. Like that's what I would be writing. Anyway. <gasps> Did y'all hear that? He literally, what? What's wrong with him? He's going feral. He's going feral. Okay, back to reading. <laughs> Resuming sprints. Thank you, Bright Sellers. Also, somebody's in my spot. So you're telling me that Riley Sager put some speculative elements in this shit? Y'all, it is twist after twist after twist after twist. And this is not your regular domestic thriller bullshit. I am getting speculative horror vibes from Mr. Sager. And I'm loving every second of it. It is so intriguing. I feel like you're either going to love this book or hate this book. But for me, who is a fan of speculative horror, like, you know, Eric LaRocca, Grady Hendrix. I am really, really, really loving it. And I didn't expect it to take this turn, but I like it. It's definitely not giving basic thriller, that's for sure. And if you can count on Riley Sager for one thing, it's always being inventive. I am at the 75% mark and I'm blown away. I love it so much. The ending's gonna have to be really bad <laughs> for me to not give this a five star because I really like it. Oh, it's so entertaining. 
cheers to that i'll keep you posted hi guys sorry if you can hear my dryer in the background i had to get up and get laundry going today because if you don't know like i do laundry like maybe once every two months uh, I have a lot of clothes. <laughs> so when I do it, it's like, it's a big production. Um, so, so sorry about the dryer, but you're gonna have to deal with it. I want to give you an update on the house across the lake, which I'm gonna finally put the cover here so you guys can see the beautiful cover and all its glory. I finished it last night, obviously. I gave it five stars. Okay, 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 here's my thing. I think a lot of people are going to not like this book and I'm totally fine with it being my brand that I like all the Riley Sager books that everybody hates. Like, I, that's fine with me. I think you should enjoy the books that you enjoy, that you have a fun time with and I definitely had a freaking blast with this one. There were twists on 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 twists It was crazy. And it was giving me more like horror vibes that I was expecting, which I really, really liked that. It was giving a little bit of Grady Hendrix with the quirky characters and the horror aspects, which obviously I love Grady Hendrix, so I enjoyed that as well. And it really reminded me of one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books, which I know is another odd, odd comparison you probably weren't expecting me to talk about with Riley Sager, but I'm not gonna give away which coho book it is because i think it will give away one of the twists but it really reminds me of a coho book that i really really enjoy and i, I cannot wait for y'all to read this and tell me what you guys think about it because i love it so much like it was just so fun it was just so freaking fun it's everything that i wanted in a thriller it was not basic it wasn't one of those thrillers that had me rolling my eyes because it's the same fucking basic twist and nothing happens in the plot like it was so fast paced, so entertaining. I can't justify giving this book anything but a five star. So some people may be mad about that, but I don't care. Right, Mochi? We don't care. We don't care what they say. Exactly. So the next book that I'm gonna pick up for this vlog is Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. And I am super excited to get into this because it is my Patreon book club pick for the month. So we're gonna be talking about it. I finally get to be involved in the discussions in the discord that I've been not reading so I don't get spoiled. Um, I'm gonna start this one today and I'm about to go get coffee with one of my besties, my maid of honor. We're just gonna like catch up, get some coffee and then go lay out. So as I lay out, I'm going to read this book and I will give you guys an update. This book's 300 pages. So I thought I'd give an update every 100 pages. I don't know, I like round numbers. So that's what we're gonna be up to today. Oh, and ugh, the dryer shut off just in time for me to tell you about the synopsis. So this is following a woman who's about to turn 40 and she dreads turning 40 because something happened with her mother when her mother turned 40 where she went mad is how it describes it in the synopsis. She has this insomnia, she could not fall asleep and it drove her mad when she turned 40. So our main character is afraid that that's gonna happen to her as well. I think Sarah Pinborough does stuff around sleep and like the fear and anxiety around sleep so well. So I'm excited to get into it. So after the first 100 pages, I will let you know how I'm feeling. vlog I am home from hanging out and I am a third of the way through insomnia by the way love this spine it was so pretty the like metallic pink and this book is very fast paced like the chapters are so so short I'm loving that aspect of it and there's also just a lot going on to like keep me intrigued. So there's like issues with her son, issues with her mom in the hospital, issues with the husband, issues with the parents at the school, like issues with her wallet being stolen. Like there's just a lot going on and I feel like she's losing track of time. 
And y'all know how I feel about an unreliable narrator. I love an unreliable narrator. She's losing time. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And I'm kind of living for it. So I feel like the first third has set up a lot of storylines. And I cannot wait to see how they all converge. And it's getting so fast paced. I just, I love the pacing of this book so much. Um, and it does remind me a lot of Behind Her Eyes. Actually, I think I'm liking this better than I liked the first third of Behind Her Eyes. Because there was a lot of just like domestic stuff going on in Behind Her Eyes. And with this, I feel like it is a lot creepier. It's a lot more anxiety inducing. So very effective. I'm going to keep reading and I'll let you know when I'm two thirds in. Hello vlog. It's actually been a couple days since I've seen you. We have been touring apartments, trying to look for a place to move, and it's just been a lot. So I haven't been doing a lot of reading, but I actually this morning got to the halfway point in Insomnia, and oh my god, there was a twist that I did not see coming. I feel like I could have predicted it if I thought about it, but I'm, I'm honestly just like vibing with this book. I'm letting it take me on this ride of like paranoia, anxiety. It is very well done in that way. And again, it's like super, super fast paced. So I don't even have time to think of theories because I'm just trying to figure out if this woman actually knows what she's doing or not. <laughs> I love the unreliable narrator stuff because I feel like it's leading me away from even thinking about you know, what could actually be happening. I'm still really liking it. We just had two-ish, like maybe one and a half big twists. So things are picking up. I really, really like it. I am going to, I think, try to binge the rest of it today and give you my final thoughts. Hello vlog, I'm back and my hair is looking so good, if I do say so myself. One of my friends uh, cuts my hair and she just came over and refreshed my hair for my birthday next week. So it's looking so good. Oh my God, it looks so good. You guys are obsessed with my hair. Um, so yeah, sorry I didn't have any footage of that. I was like, honestly, I missed her. I hadn't seen her in a long time. So we were just catching up. But I do have an update on insomnia because after I got my hair did, I read a little bit more, actually not a little bit more, a very significant amount more. I'm actually at the 80% mark right now, but I didn't want to just speed through to the 100% mark because I have things to say. I have thoughts. We just had a huge twist happen at the 80% mark, literally shook the house down. Houston, I'm fucking deceased. The one person that I've been like sus of the entire time I've been reading, and like I haven't been making theories, I've just been like, mm, that person's kind of sus. That may be the culprit. That may be the culprit. So I'm feeling like, ooh, were my instincts correct? I don't know. It's so hard to trust anything because this character just doesn't know what the hell is going on and she's the only lens that we're seeing things through. So then obviously I don't know what the hell is going on. And just the amount of gaslighting that's happening to our main character by like her husband, her boss, the police, like all these men just coming for her freaking life. It is so frustrating. I swear, I, I have like, I'm feeling those emotions, like the same emotions that I felt when I was reading like The Perfect Child. Um, What is that other book that made me so mad? I know I have it. I'll never tell. I'll never tell that. That one made me so mad. I'm getting those same type of like, stop gaslighting my girl <laughs> um, energy. And it's really, really aligning me with this main character and rooting for her and like making me wanna believe her, even though I can't trust her, which is a very, very cool concept, just like psychologically to me. And yet again, all these fucking men gaslighting her, we cannot trust men in thrillers. Men in thrillers always make me so goddamn mad. I hate every single man in this book and I just know this is a man. Obviously this isn't a fucking spoiler. 
so don't come for me. Um, but <laughs> I just know a man is behind this. I just know it. All right. I'm going to go really quickly finish this. It is so fast paced, y'all. I swear I'm going to read the rest of the 20% in like 15 minutes and I'll be back to give you final thoughts. All right. Hello, hello. I am 100% done with Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough and I'm going to give this book four stars. I cannot wait to go back through the discord and read all y'all's thoughts because I have so many spoiler things I want to talk about, but obviously this isn't a spoiler vlog. Um, I'll just say this could have been a five star. There were just a few nitpicky things that like specifically I don't like when thrillers do that like I, I couldn't give it the five and I had to lower it down to a four. The first thing is like the evil monologue from the villain, like once we find out who the villain is and they give this like long drawn out evil monologue, I don't like that, it gets very cartoony, I just, I don't like that. And I also don't like when there are loose ends that seem like a big part of the plot for a long part of the book and then by the end when the reveal happens, those loose ends just like didn't get tied up. Um, so that was annoying to me, but I definitely don't think this is a bad book at all. It's a four star read, very solid, very entertaining, very fast paced. And I did like a lot of the twists. I thought it was super inventive, which is obviously kind of what Sarah Pinborough is known for. She is not going to serve you a basic thriller. You are not going to be bored reading her books. And I really respect that. Even if sometimes her twists are a little off the wall or out of left field, I can appreciate that because at least it's something that's keeping me on my toes. And part of this did remind me of the house across the lake, like just like the style of how things panned out. So, like, I don't know. It was just like, oh, is this a new trend? Is this how thrillers are going to start to be written? I don't know. Something to think about. Um, also something to think about was the discussions that were brought up at the end of this book and just like the overall theme of the book. It kind of had a moral that it tied up with at the end, which I do like for a thriller. It's so it's not just like, oh, read this crazy story. Okay. And what? There was actually like a takeaway I felt like at the end of the story and it was kind of a psychological discussion, which obviously I enjoyed. So final thoughts are, this is a really solid thriller. It had a couple nitpicky things that annoyed me, but overall I highly recommend it. I think a lot of people are going to enjoy this one. So before I did this update, I actually made a charcuterie board and me and Cameron ate a charcuterie board and it was so fucking good. And I'm so pissed that I forgot to take B-roll footage of it because when I tell y'all this board was adorable and delicious it was i'll see if i have a picture i think i put a picture on my instagram story so here's a picture of my board <laughs> and while i was making the board i started the night she went missing by kristen bird because i found the audiobook and y'all know my favorite way to read is the audiobook and the physical book at the same time i am really liking this one so far this one is about a high school girl who goes missing after she leaves a party with this like star football player and in the wake of her disappearance all the like neighborhood moms are like beep, 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 gossiping they all have their own take on what they think happened and they're like disparaging each other's names shitting on each other's children everybody's accusing each other that is kind of the synopsis that i went in uh with and once i started it i was like I was in it from the first page. The first chapter is written from the perspective of the victim as she's being recovered, like as she's being pulled out of a swamp, it seems. So obviously this is not a spoiler, like it's literally in chapter one, but I thought that was just a really unique way to start a thriller is from the perspective of a victim's body getting pulled out of a swamp. Like I'm immediately pulled in. I want to know what led up to this. And from that chapter, we've had the POV switching constantly after. I am only 10% into the book, but already we've had like four, maybe five different perspectives. So if you like a big cast and a thriller, which I do, it keeps my attention really well. Um, me are gonna like this but also if you're somebody who like can't tell characters apart easily maybe you would want to take notes on this one but for me 
All these characters so far, at least in the intro, are really, really distinct, so I'm not having any trouble with that. Also, I did not know when I picked up this book that it actually takes place in Galveston, Texas, which is like an hour away from where I grew up, and I just love hearing about Galveston. It's like, I would never want to live there. It's, it's a fun, like, destination for like a day trip. It's a Texas beach, basically. It's an island off the coast of Texas. It's just, it's funny to read something that's set in a place that you've been so often, like you have your own opinions about. Um, yeah, it's just very interesting. And because it's set in Texas, it is a very, very like Southern mommy drama. Oh, your daughter's not uh, going to Cotillion. All right, well, I'll keep that in mind when young Braxton is looking for a partner um, later in life. And is she going to Ole Miss? Oh, she didn't get in? Okay, well, I'll just have to keep that in mind when I'm sending out the newsletter next week. Like, it is those vibes, which is very much what I grew up with <laughs> in my suburban town in Texas. So, I'm immediately connecting to it. I love all the drama, all the gossip. I'm living for the domestic thriller vibes. It's really, really giving me Southern Big Little Lies. I would say if you like Big Little Lies, but you want it set in the South, this is literally it. <laughs> so very excited to keep reading this and see how the plot pans out. And I have to actually get to work right now. But after I finish up my work, you know we're diving in. vlog it is the end of the day i have been working on this damn ass puzzle that you saw on the b-roll <laughs> in between sessions i've been working on it for like three weeks at this point in between sessions like every moment of time that i have that i'm not working throughout the day is spent on this puzzle and as you can see like i'm not even close to being done it is so hard, it is the hardest thing ever, but it is also a good thing to do while I am listening to audiobooks. So I actually made quite a bit of progress while I was listening and doing the puzzle. And then after my last session, I read up until the halfway point. Actually, I'm a little past the halfway point, I'm probably like 55% in. And I'm really liking this book. It's very emotional. Like it's not just like oh, drama, drama. Like it's very emotional. And I'm finding myself actually feeling for a lot of the characters. And I did not think that I would, but I just see like all their different perspectives and it's written in a way where I feel like really connected to them. I don't know. I just, I'm really liking it a lot. It's fast paced. It's like a classic mystery story of what happened to this girl and right at the chapter that i just finished something wild just happened at the girl who went missing at her memorial service something crazy just happened so i'm excited to keep on reading and see how the plot unfolds from here Sorry for Boba jingling. She is just like very excited right now. She knows when I'm done with work and she is ready to go on a W-A-L-K. So I'm probably gonna go do that right now before I keep reading. And then I'm going to go ahead and get started on dinner, but I will update you when I make some more progress in the book. What I just got. I went to the package room and this beautiful book was waiting for me on release day. Literally got released today. It is Hide by Kirsten White. 
and it was sent to me by the lovely Taya. We're going to buddy read this in June for my birthday month. Not because it's my birthday, like just because I'm only reading books that I'm like super excited for that I really want to read during my birthday month. And she was like, do you want to buddy read this? And I was like, yes. And then she said it. Sweetest ever. So, so excited to read this. It is a like super short, fast paced horror book about a situation in an amusement park, I believe. You can pause if you want to read the full synopsis, but it's like a basically a demented, horrific game of hide and seek in an amusement park. And like, look at this. Hello. It's so pretty. Obsessed. Thank you so much, Taya. I cannot wait to read this. Hello vlog. It is much later after dinner and I have finished The Night She Went Missing by Kristen Bird. This was a super, super quick read for me, like very, very fast. I wrote this in a matter of hours. It was so fast paced. And that is one of the things that I really, really liked about it. But there's a few things that I'm also mixed on as well. I ended up rating this book four stars because for the most part, I really did enjoy how the plot actually wrapped up. I liked the twist. I saw it coming, but I felt like they were revealed to me at the right time where I could like kind of put the pieces together on my own. I don't think it was really intended to be shocking. It was definitely more of like a nice classic mystery than a thriller. It was just a little over the top, like just slightly more dramatic than what would be conceivable in real life. And I can't tell if I like that. I can't tell if I like, you know, just a little bit more like salacious drama to keep me invested than like a very true to life story or if I would want it to be like super, super true to life in a very visceral way, kind of like the reason why I really like pretty girls, or if I would want it to be just like super speculative and crazy, like the seven and a half deaths of uh, Evelyn, I almost said Evelyn Hugo, Evelyn Hardcastle, like that is very speculative, very sci-fi. And this kind of landed somewhere in the middle where it's like these things would never happen, but they're not out of conceivable reality. They're not speculative twists, if that makes sense. It also got a little tiny bit, just the smallest bit info dumpy at the end because all of a sudden we weren't in the action and it was just people talking about the action that had already transpired. So it was a lot of like, gathering information through people talking instead of like showing. It did not show me at the end, it told me, which is a little bit of a pet peeve of mine. But again, it was really dramatic, really fast paced, and I had a really good time reading this book. At no point did I think that it dragged. There was nothing like plot points that actually annoyed me. There were no plot holes that I could find. So I actually thought the story was really, really well crafted. I just don't know if it's 100% a thriller that was written for me, um, but I did enjoy it. There was nothing about it that I did not like. So I think I'm gonna land on a four star rating for this one as well. I enjoyed it. It was definitely not a bad book at all, but it's definitely not a new favorite. It was just a good, fast paced, fun, entertaining time. And the next and last book that I'm going to pick up for this new release vlog is Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild. Oh my God, can we just take a moment for this cover? Like, it is beautiful. And as you can see, the tagline here is, she's accused of four murders. She's only guilty of three. Basically the synopsis of this book is following this like sweet, unassuming, bookish therapist hello <laughs> and she is secretly like a Joe Goldberg type killer um, she's killed three people and then when her husband dies under mysterious circumstances she gets brought in by the police but the catch is that this is actually the one murder that she did not commit so she has to figure out how to get off of this murder charge for her husband without the police convicting her for the three murders she did commit Obviously, we're following the POV of a female serial killer, and I love that. We have a Miami setting, which should be very summery and fun. I'm super excited to get into this one, and I will let you know when I have thoughts about it.
good morning vlog. I just wanted to show you the progress I made on my puzzle last night. Like, I feel like that is pretty impressive. Like, all those black pieces were so fucking hard. And I'm doing it, girl. And now I just have blue. Like, all, <laughs> all the stuff that's empty space is literally just blue. So, pray for me. Don't know when that's gonna happen but I'm determined to finish it before my birthday. So <laughs> that's my goal. All right, I'm gonna go start my day. I just wanted to show y'all. such a nice relaxing afternoon <laughs> that I've taken you along through b-roll now I finally gotten fully ready for maybe the first time in like over a month a month and a half I just literally stopped getting fully ready like this I still haven't done my hair I've just dried it but wow she's getting ready she looks like a human um, because it's Cameron's last day of school so him and his teacher friends are gonna go out and he invited me to come along because apparently partners are welcome. So I get to hang out with a bunch of teachers, <laughs> a bunch of fucking nerds <laughs> tonight. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I wanted to look cutie um, because we rarely go out on the town. So that's why I look dramatically different from the last clip you saw me in. But I, while I was laying out by the pool today, got halfway through Blood Sugar by Sasha Rothschild. And as you can see, I'm. I know this is gonna make some of y'all cringe so bad. I got my book wet. Listen, I be reading in the pool. I love destroying my books. I love that I will forever know that the first time I read this, I was in the pool. And I will immediately be taken back to this day. So, I like that, but sorry if I made you cringe <laughs> over that. Um, I love this book. I know this book is gonna become my new personality. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. Our main character, this is all about her. This is literally a character study of a flawed but really genuine feeling person. Like, this does not really feel like a caricature of a character like Joe Goldberg kind of feels like. Like, this is a very real girl and I love her. <laughs> I genuinely love her. I feel like this is me. I honestly feel like this book was written for me. Obviously, I'm not a murderer, but like, I'm relating to this character on so many things. It is just so entertaining. If you don't like character-driven stories, you probably won't like this. Um, although the plot is interesting, but I definitely didn't expect it to be like this. And I'm not mad about it at all. I thought it was gonna be like very exciting, thrilling murder, blah, blah. It's not like that. It's all retrospective. So she's sitting in this police interview and every other chapter is like the thoughts in her head and like her reflecting on the things that she's interviewing, she's being interviewed about. And then we also get like in the next chapter, her genuine reactions and like what she's saying to the police, which is obviously not the truth because she doesn't want to go to jail for murder. The mental health rep in here is obviously really great because she is a psychologist, which is slightly different from a therapist, a mental health counselor. We do the same thing. It's just a different licensing body. Um, but everything from what I know of psychologists versus mental health therapy, counselor, blah, 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 um, it's all very accurate. I think it's very interesting seeing a therapist in therapy because she is talking to her therapist a lot in the book. And I relate to a lot of that because, you know, I'm a therapist who also is in therapy. So that's a conversation we usually don't get in books. And I really think that it's cool that I'm feeling represented by that. <laughs> and there's also diabetes representation. Her husband in the book has diabetes, type one diabetes, and there's a lot involved. I feel like, obviously I don't 
have diabetes and I don't know anybody like super, super close to me that does, but it feels like really great rep. Like I did not know all the things that go into it and how like it really determines your life. Like what you eat and how you can eat and when you can eat determines the trajectory of your day. Oh my gosh, sorry, the lighting totally changed. The sun is going down. Yeah, I really like all the different representation. I'm loving it so far. It is just a very interesting character-driven story, which is some of my favorite stuff. And it's still like darkly funny and kind of fucked up. And you know, it's, it's definitely still a thriller. Um, it's not just like a contemporary story. So I'm really, really liking this. I don't know if I'll read anymore today, maybe tonight when we get home, but I have to jump into making dinner so we can eat and go out. I will see ya when I see ya. vlog how are you it is the next day and i actually ended up finishing this girl <laughs> by the pool this morning so she done and my prediction was correct i did end up giving this book five stars it is one of my new favorites of the year between this and one italian summer those two books are running neck and neck right now for my best absolute most favorite book of 2022 those are must reads if you have similar tastes to me in thrillers or contemporary like slightly magical realism-esque kind of stories there's no magical realism in here there is in one italian summer but i don't know both of those just kind of gave me the same vibes like the way that blood sugar is so focused on our main character, our female protagonist, and her development and the rest of the story is based around that. Those are my favorite type of stories. I love, love, love character-driven novels. And this one just felt like it was made for me. Like I related so much to the main character since she was a therapist, not because she was a murderer, <laughs> but it was darkly funny in that way that I love. And I love the way that the plot ended up wrapping up with the murder mystery and all of that. It was really cool to see the way that she went through all of these emotions that were coming up, just like being accused of murder, going through a trial, losing her clients, like all of that was just like, oh my God, if that happened to me, this is exactly what I would be feeling, like exactly what she was feeling. So it had a lot of emotional depth, but that definitely didn't lose like the heart pumping anxiety feeling of the thriller and wanting to know what was happening in the end. I just thought it was a perfect balance of both of those things, both of my favorite things. And the cover is beautiful. I, my, I'm just mind blown that this is a debut novel and it's safe to say now Sasha Rothschild is going to be an auto buy author for me because I have not honestly read a book that I've had this strong of a reaction to in so long since One Italian Summer. This is a fave and I'm so happy to be ending the vlog on a five star read. Wow, I've been reading these books for so long. I kind of forgot <laughs> everything that I read, but at least, you know, we ended on a five star. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing me read and review some new release thrillers for the summertime. And if you did enjoy it, go ahead and give this vlog a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to read a book and go to therapy this week and I will see you in my next video. Bye. Oh,